want to talk about this next decision, though. And Emily, I know you have some interesting insight into this one. Go ahead and put this next one up on the screen. This is this case of, you know, tension between, all right, where does... Where do religious rights turn into overt discrimination? Mm -hmm. And this is something that the court has wrestled with, of course, many times in its history. You have the Supreme Court, uh, this is the AP headline, ruling for a designer who does not want to make wedding websites for gay couples. Um, let me read you a little bit from this AP piece. They see, say, in a defeat for gay rights, the Supreme Court's conservative majority, and this was along partisan ideological lines, ruled on Friday that a Christian graphic artist who wants to design wedding websites can refuse to work with same-sex couples. One of the court's liberal justices wrote in a dissent that the decision's effect is to mark gays and lesbians for second-class status and that the decision opens the door to other discrimination. The decision to get into the specifics here suggests that artists, photographers, videographers, and writers are among those who can refuse to offer what the court called expressive services if doing so would run contrary to their beliefs, but that's different from other businesses not engaged in speech and therefore not covered by the First Amendment, such as restaurants and hotels. Um, so, Emily, I, I know you have actually spoken with this designer, so give us a little bit of the backstory on this um, this particular case. Yeah, so this is, uh, as a lot of conservatives see it, an attempt to really right the wrongs of the masterpiece cake shop, you know, the the, bake, the, the origin of the bake the damn cake uh, mm -hmm. meme that is so popular now. So Jack Phillips, who had a cake shop um, and, you know, said, I'll serve absolutely everyone. I'm not going to make a cake for a gay wedding. I'll happily serve gay customers. This is a really similar situation. And it's basically a stress test of the laws that Colorado had in place after Masterpiece. And Masterpiece was decided in a way that conservatives weren't entirely happy with. Justice Kennedy wrote the opinion and it allowed Colorado and states like it to have laws that conservatives still felt, Christians still felt, were in, allowed the state to sort of infringe on their beliefs. And so Lori Smith is a website designer. Um, she, she does like graphic design, basically. And um, because of Colorado's law, felt that she was going to be in a position where she would have to make or would be forced into the situation where she would have to make um, wedding websites for gay weddings. Now, this is where it gets interesting, uh, because recently, I think it was the Daily Beast dug into the original request that was cited in uh, the lawsuit, and the customer's request uh, basically turns out he was surprised to learn that it had been cited in the, the filing, the court filing. Um, you know, his request for her to make, it was like through the form on a website, you yeah. know, when you go to somebody's website and you just have to go through the form, then you submit it. Um, it wasn't ever, it, it looks like it wasn't ever validated or verified. Uh, he says he's not gay. He's married He's to a woman. married for like 15 years. Right. And so there were a lot of laughs about that online. And it, it is like quite interesting. Um, but it also wasn't the basis for the original lawsuit. This is from the Associated Press. The would-be customer's request was not the basis for Smith's original lawsuit, nor was it cited by the high court as the reason for ruling in her favor. Um, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, they said that Colorado had a history of past enforcement, quote, against nearly identical conduct, so masterpiece, and that the state declined to promise that it wouldn't go after Smith. So the state they didn't prove that it would not go after her if she violated their law and said, I'm not going to make this wedding website for you. So it is funny, but also wasn't really the basis for the lawsuit. Um, and that said, um, I actually really think this should have been a 9-0. I think if you flipped a 9-0 decision, I think, you know, in a, in a saner world, the ACLU would have been all over this just in, the different, in a different direction. Uh, I think if you flipped her, Lori Smith, into, if you turned her into a, a Muslim or like in a hypothetical world or somebody who was like Episcopalian, supported gay marriage and was asked by a Christian to do an anti-gay marriage cake, um, I, I think, you know, you would actually, we would, we would have our sort of ideological blinders off and say, yeah, that, like it, she's an artist. She's allowed to do what she wants. It's not Michelangelo, obviously, creating wedding websites, but I think the left would be pretty defensive um, of her ability to create a, expressive websites, et cetera, if she weren't Christian. Um, I think that just like kind of changed everybody's, uh, you know, for, and I get I get why people are suspicious of that, um, you know, after in recent history. But at the same time, I really think that they would be defending her ability as an artist um, to say, no, I don't want to make a, a website for uh, an anti-gay organization, or I don't want to create a website for the event of an anti-gay organization. I'll make the people uh, a cake for anything else, uh, or I'll make the people a website for anything else, um, but not for this anti-gay demonstration that they want to do. Um, and that's where I think it, it probably should have been 9-0. So I also think it should have been 9-0, but in the other direction. In the other direction. <laughs> because, I mean, listen, the bedrock of the civil rights era 
was the idea that you cannot discriminate against people in terms of public accommodations. And so while I acknowledge that it can be tricky to strike the balance between, all right, where does religious liberty end and where does discrimination begin, I think at this point in American history, we've all acknowledged that, you know, discrimination against LGBTQ people is a thing, that it should be prevented. This court has affirmed this multiple times. And so, you know, it's uh, they're trying to draw this line of, oh, this is uh, expressive and this is first speech. For, uh, this is a First Amendment free speech issue. But, you know, there are a lot of things that could be theoretically construed as speech, including baking a cake, including making a website, including, you know, printing up the uh, the programs for the wedding. Any part of that could theoretically be called uh, free speech. And so I think this is much more about just you have an obligation as a business owner to serve the public and you cannot fall back on your religion as a justification for discrimination because, listen, the Bible has been used to justify overt discrimination many times in American history. I mean, it was used, arguments from the Bible were used to say, oh, this is God is against interracial marriage. So to me, this is, you know, way over the line in terms of where religious freedom uh, lies. But, you know, court sees it otherwise. So we will, I'm sure, have additional probably legislation about what exactly the bounds are here. I do think the piece, you know, I, I hear what you're saying about this, the actual mechanics of how this request came to be didn't end up being central to the decision. But I do think the fact that, number one, she's actually never made a wedding website for right. anyone. Yeah, no, she hasn't. She's never made one. She said, oh, I might, I'm thinking about theoretically maybe getting into the wedding website business. It's like, okay. And then the request itself is fake. I mean, this guy did not submit a request. He's not gay. He's been married for 15 years. And this is the only request that they could cite. So, I mean, listen, this is the way that our legal process works. Um, activists, you know, have something that they want to test. Yeah. They look for yes. a test case in order to do it. It's kind it's it's actually embarrassing and humiliating for the court, though, that they never even did the basics, that this got all the way to the Supreme Court without anyone doing the basics of checking in on whether this was actually a real request or not. So it is embarrassing. And I think also if the reality have, of that had come out, I don't know that the case would have gone any differently because, again, I think this is more ideological than it is actually doing, you know, any sort of real justified legal analysis. But it may have called into question some of the other arguments. It may have put it on sort of shakier ground when you have a designer who doesn't actually making websites with a request that isn't actually a real request. There's, you know, a lot of those pieces that kind of fall apart. So she was represented by Alliance Defended Fre Defending Freedom, which has worked really closely with Jack Phillips. And um, my assumption is that, so this is what's happened with Jack Phillips, Christian Baker, over and over again, that you have people on the left coming in and making obscene requests of him. Um, and it just, like... It, things that I won't even describe here, like just obscene requests of him to test the system and mm -hmm. to test the law. And so uh, I think it's it's really been happening in both directions. And my assumption is that, you know, that's, that's sort of what we all understand is happening with these like speech laws in places like Colorado or Washington State where everyone's just sort of stress testing the system and seeing where they can come out. And uh, I think it was Elena Kagan that said in this term, I think she was referring to the student debt case, but she said one of the interesting things actually is not the way the conservative majority ruled in the case, but their decision to take up the case at all. Mm -hmm. And I really think that's worth thinking yeah, about. Yeah, that is true. Um, because we've had courts rule differently on affirmative action in recent years and, and sort of punt um, in different cases, you know, punt on Obamacare in a way that was really, really displeasing to conservatives looking at Chief Justice John Roberts. And so uh, I, I I think actually part of what's really interesting about this is the is the cases that the court took up this session. Yeah, I, I think that that is very true. And, you know, just my last point on this is I, I really do agree with the dissent that this puts gays and lesbians on kind of second class footing because it's not like a gay couple that's looking to have a wedding website. It's not like they're trying to make some like activist ideological point. They're just trying to live their lives. Right. And the fact that they are entering into a gay marriage makes it political when, um, you know, a, a, homo a heterosexual couple that was getting married, it's seen as just like normal and non-political. Well, these are all just people not trying to be activists, not trying to make ideological points, just trying to live their lives. And now if you're a gay couple, you've got to like sort through which vendors are going to be willing to serve you. And um, the Supreme Court has said that that is perfectly fine and that can be the law of the land.
This is why my one remaining libertarian take on things is that I don't think marriage should be sanctioned by the government at all. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> right along. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new. We wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.